Okay, good afternoon and welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for another summer library program. Today we're doing bugs, bugs, bugs. So guess what we're learning about today? Can you figure it out? It's bugs. I hate to spoil it. It's bugs. Okay. So thank you guys all for joining us today. If you haven't already registered for the summer library program, I would like to really encourage you to do so. Go to your local Timberland library and tell them you want to join the summer library program and we'll get you all signed up. You get not one, but two free books this summer. Two free books, one for participating and one for completing. So if you haven't already, please come to your local Timberland library and start the summer library program. And before we get started, Timberland Regional Libraries recognize that we operate within the traditional territories of the Coastal Salish people who've been the stewards of these lands since time immemorial. TRL provides library services to Indian tribes, extending beyond the ge geographic limits of Lewis, Mason, Thurston, Pacific, or Grace Harbor counties. This acknowledgement reminds us to strive for respectful partnerships with all people as we search for collective healing and learn how to be better stewards of the indigenous lands we inhabit. And so as a reminder for today's program, we're gonna have two parts. One, we're gonna meet some cool bugs. Two, we're gonna make a cool craft afterward and Miss Cindy's gonna help us do that. And don't forget, tune in here next week at 1 p.m., we're going to be focusing on nocturnal animals and why they choose to come out at night. All right. Are you guys ready to see some bugs? All right. Take it over, Miss Cindy. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah. And I'll be here next week, too, with the nocturnal animals. That will be me. Um, so first off, we call bugs, we kind of say bug for a lot of things, but actually a lot of things that we call bugs are not bugs at all. So we're just going to kind of talk a little bit about the different families um, of something that are called arthropods and what exactly that means. So before we start, I want to kind of show you a few little arthropods that I have as bio fact. Um, you can see that they are not all the same. There are so many different shapes and colors and um, different body parts to an arthropod. Um, they look very, very different from each other. And I've got a few more cool bio bugs. Love these. Um, so those are just a few of the things that we might call bugs. If we were to see them crawling around, we would go, I saw a giant bug or I saw this bug. So um, first of all, let's talk about what we call a bug. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to give you the scientific name for it so you can be a little uh, junior scientist. They are called arthropods. So that is the true name for something that has an exoskeleton or an outer shell. And that's because they don't have any bones in their body. So our bodies, our bodies have full of bones. We've got so many bones in our bodies. They do not have a single bone in their body. Instead, they have kind of an outer shell that surrounds them and keeps their body whole. So if you look, it looks, this tarantula looks kind of funny, doesn't it? Because there's a bunch of holes in there and wait, something has popped off. That's because this tarantula has done something called molting. They get rid of their exoskeleton, they crawl out of it, they leave the old one behind, and they have a brand new one that is bigger and stronger and ready to take on um, the next part of their life. This right here is a cicada um, that has done the same thing. So let's look at some exoskeletons, because I have a few. So this is a cockroach exoskeleton. This cockroach simply split open the backside and crawled out, pulled the rest of its body out and left this old shell behind. So it's really light. It hardly feels like anything at all because it's hollow. There is no body inside of it. So exoskeleton. This is an exoskeleton of a millipede. You can see 
that they crawled right out of it. And then this exoskeleton kind of swelled up after they crawled out. You can see right here the little, the little tiny ridges of their exoskeleton. This right here is an exoskeleton of a cicada. Check that out. Cracked right open on the back and pulled its body out of there. And um, last but not least, we have a bit of a tarantula exoskeleton. So you can see those holes right there. Those holes are where their legs and pedipalps were. So they basically pulled their entire body out and left this old shell behind. So it's kind of hard to understand, but if you think about a snake that sheds, they do that because their scales don't grow. They stretch. Same with an exoskeleton. It's going to stretch, going to get too big, too small for their body, it's going to be uncomfortable, and they need to crawl out and have a brand new larger exoskeleton um, attached. Kind of like our clothes. If we grow, do we want to wear the same clothes? No. If you're seven, do you want to wear your three-year-old clothes? No, going to be too small and uncomfortable. Same thing with their exoskeletons. They get too small, too uncomfortable. They just need to get out of them. So they crawl out. It's kind of a hard thing to do, though. It takes a lot of energy to be able to do that. So arthropod. Arthropod is um, an invertebrate. No bones. An exoskeleton is the shell that surrounds their body. So let's talk about these things that we call bugs. We're going to start off with our six-legged friends. Six-legged um, bugs are called insects. All kinds of different insects that we might recognize. Butterflies, roaches, um, ants, and beetles. So many different types of insects. So they are going to have um, their legs, their head, um, and then their thorax, their body. So let's meet an insect. And some of you may have already met her before, but six legs is how we know what an insect is. Insects, six legs. And actually, we're going to do our craft with this little girl right here. This is Vanessa. Vanessa is a walking stick or a stick bug. And you can see she has six very long, delicate legs. And those six legs um, help us to recognize her automatically that she is an insect. Do dogs have six, le six legs? No. Do elephants have six legs? No. Only insects have six legs. Now, of course, um, she uses those legs to move around, to crawl around. And if you've ever like had an insect land on you and you're like trying to brush it off and you wonder, ah, why can't I get it off of me? It seems like it's sticking to me. It's because they are. Insects have little tiny hooks on the bottom of their feet that help them to grasp on. So that's why a lot of times you'll see them like crawling up a tree or walking on a fence um, and sometimes even standing on the wall in your home because insects have those little tiny hooks that help them to grasp on. They don't want to fall off wherever they are. So they are holding on as tight as they can to make sure that they are nice and secure. So that is our six legged insect. We also can um, identify six-legged insects. Um, let's see, ladybugs, we've got beetles, we've got roaches, um, butterflies, um, uh, superworms or mealworms have six legs. So lots and lots of animals that have six legs. Oh, bees and wasps. Yeah, so many of them. All right, in you go, little lady. Okay. So we're going to add two more legs. Two plus six is eight. Eight-legged animals. Who wants to put in the chat? What is an eight-legged animal? What animal has eight legs? Let's see if we can get any. Hmm. 
Don't see anything coming up yet. Who can name us eight-legged animals? There we go, spider. Izzy said spider, perfect. Eight-legged um, creatures. We definitely do have spiders. Oh, Claire said spider as well. Well, we call them arachnids. Arachnids include spiders, tarantulas, and scorpions. Scorpions also have eight legs. Check it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight symmetrical legs. And then these claws or pinchers are actually kind of like their antenna. They use them as pinchers. They are antenna to feel their way around also. We see this tarantula right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we have these two in the front that are short. You can see them better right here. Those are their pedipalps, also used as um, to feel their way around. So kind of like antenna, but they're called pedipalps. All right, so let's meet our eight-legged friend. Let's see, come on out, Daisy. There we go. So this is Daisy. Daisy is a tarantula and she's got eight beautiful long legs, as you can see. Now, once we get over six legs, we no longer call them bugs. They are not considered a bug. They change their name. So when we talk about bugs, really all we're talking about are insects. We're not talking about spiders. We're not talking about millipedes or centipedes. So if you want to be more accurate, you can call your spiders or tarantulas or scorpions, you can call them arachnids, okay? That is what they are. So Daisy here, she is a beautiful rose-haired tarantula. They come from South America and they are kind of like the puppy dogs of the tarantula world. They are pretty calm and easygoing, very, very sweet and slow moving. She is um, an amazing little tarantula. I love her. And, oh, she's waving at everybody now. She's like, hello. She can give eight waves, can't she? Yep, she can wave eight times. Now she does have venom, so that means that she can bite. She does have fangs, but really tarantulas are not going to um, chase you down. They are not going to bite you unless you have bothered them. You have reached down, you've touched them, you've tried to pick them up, um, anything like that. Then they're going to feel like they need to defend themselves or protect themselves. So that's when they would bite. But other than that, a tarantula, if it knows you're there, it's going to scurry off as fast as it can. It doesn't want to have anything to do with you. Kind of like snakes, same thing. They don't want to have anything to do with you. Now, um, sometimes people think because tarantulas are bigger that they are more deadly than spiders. 100% not true. Spiders are way more deadly than um, tarantulas. More people have died from spider bites than tarantula bites. The reason is because a zero people have died from tarantula bites. That's right. They just don't have enough venom to fill our bodies and do as much harm as a spider can. So we don't have to fear tarantulas. We just respect them. They are eating bugs and insects just like spiders. Arachnids are good animals to have around. I know we don't want a bunch of webs in our house, but arachnids are excellent animals to have around for sure. Remember, if you have any questions, go ahead and put it in the chat. Um, you are more than welcome to do that. And don't worry if you don't want to use the chat. Um, before we move on to the craft, we will answer some questions as well, okay? All right, so we're going to add two more legs. And as we add two more legs, we come to what we call, uh, there we go, crustaceans. Crustaceans are our crabs, lobsters, shrimp. Um, they have 10 legs. So they are going to, say one, two, three, four, five, 
one, two, three, four, five. Um, and then one, two, three, four, five. Um, so our crustaceans, they don't only live in the water, but we also have land crustaceans as well, like you know, this little friend right here. So this is Harrison. Harrison is a hermit crab. And the coolest thing ever, because Harrison is in a brand new shell. Harrison just changed his shell two days ago. That means that he has gotten bigger because he chose to get into a much bigger shell than what he was in. He was in a smaller shell and um, I have a lot of different shells for him to choose from. So he decided this one was pretty cool. It's pretty fancy on the back. So he's like, yeah, I'm gonna cruise into that shell. That's gonna be the one I'm gonna wear for a while until of course he gets bigger. And then he's going to move into a different shell. But just because he's wearing a hard shell, he still has an exoskeleton. You can see that he is covered with a hard shell on his body, right? All those little legs, they are covered in a very hard shell. Where are you going, Harrison? Where are you going? So um, he does have the ability to um, change shells, but he also molts or crawls out of um, crawls out of the shell, just like the tarantula does, just like cockroaches do. Um, even the walking stick will do the same. So 10 legs and then a big claw, those two big claws. Um, that is our crustaceans. 10 legs. All right. I see a question in the chat. You have um, more hermit crabs, if so, do they shell exchange? That is a great question. So the reason why I have Harrison is because um, he was not very nice to the rest of the hermit crabs where he lived before. In fact, he was kind of like, everything is mine. He did not get along well with others. He didn't know how to play <laughs> appropriately. So they decided to separate him from the rest of the crabs. And um, so I took him. He is by himself. He does not go with other crabs. Um, but I have seen really cool videos of crabs, hermit crabs on the shore where they are exchanging shells. Um, what they'll do is they'll find a shell that has washed up on the shore that's empty. And then the biggest one will go and try on the shell. If it doesn't fit, then the next one, in, he'll go back to his old shell. The next one in line will try it on. And they kind of just wait in the line and they are very organized. And then if one, uh, it fits one, then he'll take off with it. And then the next one in line will try on his old shell. So they kind of just exchange shells um, all over. It's kind of cool how it works. Uh, except for Harrison, he's like, everything is mine. These are all my shells. So he doesn't go with any others. All right, so we're going to move on to, um, let me move this over, myriapods. Myriapods have 12 or more legs. So we have our um, isopods, which are our roly polies. Then we have uh, millipedes and centipedes. All of these have 12 or more legs. So how many legs does a millipede have? How many legs does a centipede have? Centipedes can have up to 100 legs. But as you can see in this picture, that is definitely not 100 legs. And in fact, um, most centipedes only have maybe 20 to 30 legs. The most amount that a centipede can have is going to be um, about 70 legs. So they do not get up to 100 legs, but that's what centi means. Centi means 100. Millipedes, on the other hand, they can have supposedly up to 1,000 legs, but the one with the most amount of legs is about 750 legs. So again, not quite a thousand legs. So let's talk about the difference between millipedes and centipedes before we meet what I have with my myriapod. 
Oh, and by the way, myriapod means many legs, many feet. So pod means feet and myria means many. Okay, so let's look at the differences between these two. First of all, you can see that the millipede is round. Kind of looks like, think of your pinky finger, it's round. Centipedes are flat. So they're, they kind of look like if you put maybe um, 20 pieces of tape together, you get like girth, but you would still have a flat body, right? That's gonna be your centipede. You can also see that the centipede's legs grow out the sides of its body. So they are growing out the sides. Millipedes feet or legs are growing out the bottom. And then look at the backside of the centipede. See those two little things coming out there? Oh, that is how it injects its prey. So they are the venomous ones. Millipedes are not venomous. So they are non-venomous. So you definitely don't want to pick up centipedes, but you also kind of want to leave millipedes alone too, because millipedes are great helpers. They help to decompose. So let's meet my millipede. Um, she is a giant African millipede. They come from the island of Madagascar. They are the largest millipedes of the world. And they do an amazing job of cleaning up. They do something called decomposing, which basically means breaking things down, making things smaller. So any kind of leaf litter that falls on the forest floor, any kind of fallen trees or logs, any kind of rotten fruit, they are going to eat it. It's gonna pass through their body. They are going to uh, go to the bathroom and it is going to turn into fertilizer to help the plants and trees to grow. They are basically um, picking up what the plants left behind and turning it into food for them. They are uh, incredible animals that do an amazing job of helping. So let's see what we can see. First off, round body, millipede. Remember, round like your pinky. Second, legs coming out the bottom of her body. Definitely millipede. They walk with the legs underneath them. And last but not least, we do not see any little stingers coming out the back. That is definitely a millipede. So millipedes are harmless. Centipedes are the ones that you really need to look out for. <coughs> Excuse me. They are going to be the ones that can um, pinch or sting. So they are going to be the dangerous ones you don't want to bother. So millipedes are pretty amazing. Now we don't have any as big um, as this here in Texas, but um, I think in Washington, you've got some pretty big ones and uh, not as big as, as the giant African um, millipedes, but you still have some pretty decent sized ones. Um, okay, what is her name? Her name is Millicent. So Millie, Millie the millipede. Okay, so we wanna talk about bug eaters, okay? Because if you have um, bugs or insects or arachnids or millipedes or anything that is an arthropod, you need things to eat them. Three quarters of the world's animals are arthropods. That means that there are way more arthropods than any other animal, any bird, mammal, reptile, there's way more. And if we let them go, then we would just be overrun with them because they don't just lay like one or two eggs. They can lay thousands of eggs at a time. So that means that if we let them go without animals to eat them, we would just be overrun. We wouldn't be able to walk on the ground. We wouldn't be able to drive a car. We'd have like bugs hitting our windshield. We wouldn't be able to sleep in our bed. We'd have bugs crawling all over us. So we need animals that help to keep them in check. So in other words, animals that are going to be eating them. Um, we had a question, how many legs does your millipede have? That is a great question. I've never had the patience to count her legs, but 
Um, for every segment of her body, she has four legs. So if I really had the patience or the time, I could count each segment, multiply it by four, and I would know exactly how many. I am assuming she probably has about 400 though. That is my assumption. All right, so let's eat, meet some bug eaters. So first off, we're going to meet a super bug eater. And his name is Darwin. Darwin is a bearded dragon. And just like a lot of lizards, he loves to eat bugs and insects. Now he's mostly gonna eat insects. He's probably gonna stay away from the millipedes and the centipedes and the spiders and tarantulas. He instead is going to go for those little things that might be hopping around or buzzing around or crawling around in his home. So he comes from Australia. Let's show his back because he's gorgeous. He comes from Australia and um, they live in the desert. So really wide, dry, open spaces that there is not a lot going on. He really has to keep his eye out for things that are moving. And since insects are usually pretty fast, he has to be fast also. So he sits really, really still, conserving all his energy until there is a bug or an insect that is nearby. And then he darts out as fast as he can and he grabs it. He has little tiny sharp teeth that are perfect for cracking open their exoskeleton because that's something that every single bug eater needs to do. They have to break open the exoskeleton. That hard shell is kind of hard to break through. I'm sure all of you have squished a bug before, right? Maybe a beetle or a roach or something else. And you may have noticed that crunch sound. Yeah, that's the exoskeleton. So he has pretty little sharp teeth that are great for breaking open and crunching through that exoskeleton. What are you doing, Darwin? He looks like he's smiling, doesn't he? He's like, that's right, I'm smiling. Mm-hmm, that's right. So Darwin has this amazing ability to be able to use his um, eyes separately. So he can use one eye to look forward and one eye to look backwards. And that way he really doesn't miss anything at all. He is going to be able to see things um, that are in front of him on the left side and behind him on the right side. He is always paying attention. He's like, do you got bugs for me? Sometimes I bring bugs and feed him while, we while we're here, but I didn't bring any worms for you today, sorry. All right. so. Lizards, definitely great helpers. They're eating bugs and insects. We want to have lizards around because, like I said, if we don't keep those insects and bugs in check, we are going to become way overpopulated. They are just going to take over and we aren't going to have our um, nice, clean areas and homes. Um, let's see, like flies. Yes, they will eat little um, fruit flies and things like that. So let's meet our other bug eater. And you know what? I think she's going to be in our in our class next week. She's going to be in our nocturnal class. I will probably have her. But this is my little hedgehog. And her name is Maybelline. We're going to see if Maybelline wants to peek out here. She's a little shy. I've just um, had Maybelline for a little over a month and she has just gotten out of quarantine and started coming and meeting friends. So um, she is only about two weeks into doing outreach. So she's still a little shy, but oh, I see a nose popping out. Now you can see her long nose. She's licking her lips. She's like, oh, I smell some bugs on you. <laughs> she probably does. She has a super powerful nose that can sniff out insects and bugs that are hiding underground. Now that means that if she is using her nose to find food, she doesn't really need her eyes, does she? 
You don't need to see something that's hiding underground. She's got little tiny eyes. There they are. Little tiny itty bitty eyes. Kind of poor eyesight, but that nose does the most of her finding food. Um, so she doesn't really need great eyesight anyway. She does have pretty big ears though. And those ears are great for listening for predators, which are going to help her to know when to curl up into a little ball like she was. That's gonna let her know that there's danger close by. She's gonna curl up into a ball. She's gonna be covered with all these little spikes or quills. And um, once she's curled up tight, animals don't really wanna bite down on her. Those quills are pretty sharp on the end. They're pretty stiff and an animal biting into it is not really gonna get their teeth to penetrate her skin. So she is going to be pretty safe um, by using those quills to protect her, even against things as large as a hyena or a jackal. So she can protect herself against some pretty big and strong predators. Okay, so we have met our arthropods right no more bugs arthropods animals with exoskeletons we had six legs our insects eight legs arachnids we had ten legs crustaceans 12 or more legs are our myriapods those are our um, what we call bugs and then of course we also have to have our bug eaters without our bug eaters we would just not have a happy life here on earth at all so we definitely need our bug eaters so before we move on to the craft um does anybody have any questions that they didn't put in the chat that they want to ask before we move on to the craft and if you do, you can raise your virtual hand, you can unmute yourself and go ahead and ask your question. And thank you for being so wonderful and, um, and staying nice and quiet during the program. Karen says no, no questions. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? No questions? My goodness. I have one, Cindy. Oh, Jennifer has a question. I've heard that hedgehogs are only allowed in certain states. Do you know why? Well, that is a great question. And the reason is because they are ravenous eaters of bugs. And although in their homes um, where they originate from, their natural habitats, they are helpers by eating the bugs and insects that naturally occur around them. They can become a pest and eat the good bugs as well if they were to get loose in a certain um, area. So if they were to escape your home and get out into the gardens, instead of eating the bad bugs that we don't want, they could be eating those good bugs. And there's always a balance. They could also be eating bugs that are meant for other animals. So because that's not their natural habitat, we don't want them loose. And um, yeah, usually our Department of Agriculture is pretty good about making sure that uh, we don't have pets that might become um, a pest. Thank you. Yeah. Is that the only question we had? All right. Looks like we have one in the chat from Lucy that says, I think she might have sent it to me. Um, Do yeah. all bugs have shells? Yes, so all arthropods have exoskeletons. That's really what arthropod means, um, is an animal with um, an exoskeleton hard shell, um, although pod means foot, so I'm not sure of the technical, like, yeah. But um, they all have an exoskeleton. Maybe Lucy came in a little late, but um, can I tell you something cool uh, a certain, about a certain animal? Or the outer shell. I mean, yes. Like there's a certain kind of animal. I don't know if it eats bugs or not, but I know it's called a t a gigantic technicolor squirrel. What? 
I have never heard of that, but traditionally squirrels are rodents. They eat plants, so I don't think they eat. Um, no, but this rodents. one can jump 20 feet. I have never heard of that animal. So I cannot answer any questions about it because I don't know. All right. Um, I know a friend. I know a, um, I know a friend that like the road about it. Um, you can look up like, I think it eats bugs. I don't know. Okay. You know. All right, maybe I will after the class. Um, all right, so we're gonna move on to our craft. Uh, does everyone have their supplies? We've got, yes. Okay, um, so we're gonna start off with our construction paper. I chose bright pink. It doesn't, the camera does not like bright pink, but um, so I have bright pink because I like my bookmarks to have kind of a lot of color. So we're going to start off like this lengthwise. Our rectangle is going to be lengthwise. All right. And then we're going to fold it in half. So exactly in half. All right. And then do we have everyone have it in half. Perfect. And then we're gonna fold it in smaller pieces, however thick you want your bookmark to be. I'm gonna put it this wide. I'm gonna fold it like this. Just a little piece, see how I just put a little, fold a little piece of it right there. So it's in half and then I folded this little flap. And then I'm gonna fold that again, right where it rests. And then I'm gonna fold it again. And I'm making it smaller and smaller until I have bookmark size. Perfect. And then I'm going to take my tape out and I'm going to tape the end. So you can have a long bookmark, you can have a short bookmark, you can have your bookmark any, um, any size you want it. Could it leave your, your paper whole? and then fold it over. So it's exactly whatever you want to. Um, oh, about the Technicolor squirrels. Huh, um, which way do you fold the first fold? So you had it lengthwise, and then you're gonna fold it in half that way, lengthwise. Yeah. Um, how can you get centipedes out of your worm bin? Ooh, that's a tough one. Yeah, when you have like different things that get into your worm bin without harming your worms, it is kind of tough to get them out. All right, so let's see who's got their, who's got theirs folded over. All right, Perrin, do you want to make yours smaller? So it can be, so it can go be like a bookmark. You know, we've all seen a bookmark, so we want it kind of that size. And I've made big ones before. I've made like the whole piece of paper instead of folding it in half. You can do that as well. All right, Cassinda, go ahead and squish it down so it's flat, so it can fit in your book, all right? Perfect. There you go, Perrin. All right, awesome. Okay, so I'm not going to do this next part because I'm going to have to get out my walking stick because this is a walking stick bookmark. Um, and if you want to, you can draw her so you can, um, if you have a pen or a pencil, crayon marker, you can draw her onto your walking stick, um, onto your bookmark. But I'm not going to do it because I'm going to be holding her. But I'm going to hold her up like a model for you so you can see how her body looks. So go ahead and whoops, draw her. Where are you going, silly? You can stand still. Be a good model. Be a good model. She doesn't sit still like a human model, does she? So there you go. See how her head is just a little bit, little tiny thing in front of her front legs. And don't worry, we're gonna make our own legs for our bookmark. And then she's got the next set of legs and then the next set of legs. And then make sure you leave room for that back end of her. And then you all can tell me when you have her drawn on your bookmark.
And then I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a quick one for me. I'm gonna draw. You know what? It's a it's a good thing that we're using a stick book because all I can do, all I can draw, I'm a horrible artist. So really all I can draw are like stick people and stick insects. So good thing we have a stick insect. All right, so how did everyone do? Let's see some. Can I hold it up to the camera so we can see how you did? I'm gonna draw mine real fast. So we've got our little head, our tiny antenna, our body. Oh, good one, Cassinda. Wow, Perrin, awesome job. Wow, those are really good. Uh, I'm kind of embarrassed now to show mine. <laughs> mine is not so great, but I'm trying. That's all that matters. And like we always know, art is um, art is in the eye of the beholder. Look at that. That's my stick insect. All right, so does everyone have their hole punch? Everyone have a hole punch? If you don't have a hole punch, that's okay. You can use, um, you can use like a pen or anything else to make a hole. So I'm gonna go like this and I'm gonna punch a hole, a base of, so see how I'm punching a hole right there? the base of each leg. And if you have something else to make a hole with, that is totally okay also. So there is my little holes. I see Perrin has a hole punch. All right. Now for the next part, you can use string, you can use, I grabbed some pipe cleaners. So I like the pipe cleaners. I'm gonna use pipe cleaners instead because then he's gonna have like super stiff, she's gonna have super stiff legs. So I'm gonna fold the pipe cleaner in half like this. If you have string, it should be about this long, okay? So about the size of your hand, about the length of your hand. So if you need to cut your string, um, you can cut it. I know once you, once you fold it over, it's kind of hard to get the hole punch through, isn't it? It's kind of hard. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of have to squish. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put it through and then on the back, I'm going to fold it over like this. I'm gonna wrap around it and I'm gonna make a leg. Except I did it backwards, but that's okay. So there's one leg. Oh good job, Perrin. So Perrin, do you have um do you have pipe cleaners or do you have string? I usually use string, but I figured okay, perfect. But I figured pipe cleaners would be easier for you all to see. So that's why I grabbed some pipe cleaners instead of the string. Because I brought bright colors so you could see it really well. And then this is going to be the other front leg. I'm going to put through like that. I'm going to bring it to the edge, kind of twist it around so it doesn't come loose. And then I'm going to fold it like that. So there are my two front legs. I got two legs so far. I'm going to do some purple legs. Did she have different color legs? Nah, she had all the same color legs, didn't she? But I'm going to turn, fold my pipe cleaners in half, fold the other pipe cleaner in half, getting ready. Anybody else want to show their, what they've got so far? So going through, going to twist it around. So don't forget to twist it so they don't come out, okay? So twisting, going to shape the leg how I want it. Going in the other side. 
from the front to the back. So the long part is coming out the front that you drew on, okay? Let's see, how's Cassandra doing? Can I see yours, Cassandra? How are you doing? There you go. There you go. You got your legs coming out there. All right, last two legs are green. I'm doing green for the last two legs. Can I see yours, Perrin? Katie, Lucy, you want to show yours? Ishan? Oh, yeah. Cool, Perrin. That's awesome. That is super cool. I'm going to have a creepy looking book, huh? Weird looking book with a creepy bookmark. I used to collect bookmarks. I had from everywhere. I had every place I would go, I would get a bookmark. Kind of like how people sometimes collect spoons and things like that, but I would get bookmarks. <laughs> Check it out. Look at mine. Oh, look at parents. Awesome. Let's see. Anybody else want to show theirs? Did anybody else do theirs? If I would have put added two more legs, I could have had a spider bookmark, right? <gasps> yeah, but I chose an insect bookmark, didn't I? All right. Mine had a lip in it. Oh, that's okay. You could probably just. And I'm just put using the tape to put to to tape the root together yeah. so it doesn't rip. Exactly. Yeah, you can just tape it up. Not a big deal. All right. Does anybody else want to show their bookmark? Show what they did. And if you want to, you can make a little pipe cleaner antenna. You can put holes right there and make the antenna. That would probably be what you have hanging out of your book so you can find your page. That would be the easiest way. But there we go. There are our bookmarks. All right, so do we have any last questions before we say goodbye? And then if you didn't, um, if you want to watch this over again to get the craft, um, to get figure out the bookmark again, um, if you didn't have right supplies or anything like that, um, it will be shared on the library's website. YouTube too, or it's going to be on our YouTube channel. Okay, there you go. So you can, you can find that on the YouTube channel. And then next week we're going to be talking about nocturnal animals and we're going to be doing a hedgehog craft with a paper plate, paper plate hedgehogs. Exciting. Thank you so much, Cindy. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Well, we will see you later. I'm going to show mine when I'm finished with it. Thank okay. you. Yeah, bring it next week to the class and we can see it, okay? Bring it to next week's program so you can show us. Thank you, Miss Cindy. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for joining.